northeastern Vermont is home to Putney, a whimsical town known for its creative diversity and vibrant arts and crafts culture. This year, Putney celebrates their 39th annual Putney Craft Tour, and they invite you to spend Thanksgiving weekend at their culinary, craft, and stage event. Spend the day or the weekend meandering Putney's back roads and meet 24 of Vermont's finest artists. You'll have the opportunity to experience firsthand their craftsmanship and creative process. And it's also the perfect weekend to kickstart the holiday gift giving season while enjoying fabulous cuisine, local wine, and inspiring theater performances. Our first stop on the Putney Craft Tour is Brandywine Glass Works, where Robert Birch has been blowing exquisite glass for over 30 years. The specialty is silver glass, which incorporates delicate bubble and organic webbing patterns into beautifully designed perfume bottles, heart vases, paperweights, and sculptural pieces. During the Putney Craft Tour, you'll have the opportunity to visit Robert Birch's Vermont studio for a glass blowing demonstration, as well as to choose a one-of-a-kind piece. The Putney Craft Tour also features the Green Mountain Spinnery, a cooperatively owned mill that's been creating richly colored yarns made from the highest quality U.S. sourced fibers for over 35 years. The Green Mountain Spinnery also invites you in to experience their unique certified organic processing methods that have made them a reliable resource for farmers, weavers, knitters, and crafters of all kinds. You can also stop into their yarn shop to choose from a wide selection of richly colored, all natural blends of yarn, as well as over 200 patterns and samples. Next on the Putney Craft Tour, we're visiting Parish Hill Creamery to experience seasonal, handmade, raw milk Italian cheese at its very best. Parish Hill is a family endeavor with over 35 years of cheese making experience. Peter, Rachel, and Alex make cheese traditionally using old world methods and only the finest ingredients sourced as close to home as possible. In fact, their raw milk is sourced just a couple miles up the road from the healthy cows that graze the lush pastures of Elmlea Farm at Putney School. During the Putney Craft Tour, you'll get a chance to indulge in samples, purchase some local Italian cheese, and learn all about the art of making cheese by hand. To round out our day at the Putney Craft Tour, we're headed to Putney Mountain Winery to taste and experience their award-winning artisanal fruit wines, liqueurs, and sparkling ciders. Since 1989, Putney Mountain Winery has handcrafted their beverages from the bounty of fruit grown in southern Vermont, ensuring the creation of wine that reflects the local terroir. Visit the winery and tasting room to sample artisanal beverages of complexity and finesse, such as Vermont Pear, Simply Cranberry, Rhubarb Blush, Vermont Cassis, as well as Simply Ginger and Simply Maple Liqueurs. The winery is located inside Basketville and is sure to be a refreshing stop on the Putney Craft Tour. Experience all that the Putney Craft Tour has to offer during Thanksgiving weekend and discover why they've been voted one of Vermont's top 10 winter events for the third year running. You can learn more about the Putney Craft Tour by visiting PutneyCrafts.com. There's plenty more to come on our day trip through Putney on the Visitor's Guide to Southern Vermont, so stick with us. Hi. Today we're here to talk about the Putney Craft Tour. This is Open Studio, and we're looking forward to having some terrific conversation 
with Fiona Morehouse and Robert Birch, uh, who are on the Putney Craft Tour. I'll just give you a quick review. The Putney Craft Tour is Thanksgiving weekend. It is the oldest continuous craft tour in North America. And the dates this year are November 24th, 25th, and 26th, which is Thanksgiving weekend. And now I'm going to turn to Fiona. And you brought some wonderful uh, pieces here. Maybe you can describe a little bit um, about how you do this. Sure. This is quite amazing. If you can look at this, it's all indented and... Well, you tell me. Right. So I start with porcelain clay, which is a very fine clay body. So it's incredibly soft and flexible when you're working with it in its wet form. Um, everything is wheel thrown. So there's actually a tremendous amount of uniformity to begin with. And then I basically hand manipulate everything. Um, so there's sort of this integration of wheel throwing and hand building. So each piece spends a lot of time in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this pushing in of this texture and there's a lot of variation that comes from that because uh, you have to be very aware of how thick the clay wall is. I tend to work very thinly. Um, so that gives you some areas that are more indented than others and some more broad, flatter planes of clay versus textured area. Um, so that's the building process. The decoration and glazing is a lot of brushwork. So I start with iron oxide which I love using because I don't actually know if this is true, but what I have heard is that iron oxide is a byproduct of when a star is made. And that, so, oh. <laughs> and that, with, that it's the, have you heard this before? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that grabbed me. And so sure. I'm really committed now. So, um, it a is a star is born. Yes. And so, um, the stain is very thick and dark, so it requires first you're dipping it in the stain and then a lot of wiping. Um, and then there are three to four coats of glaze that are brushed on over the outside, uh, very thinly, almost like watercolor painting. So I'm controlling to a degree how much glaze is going where to create the variation that you see and to give each piece Hold or to it emphasize its yeah. unique yeah. Um, yeah, so Are you, you using wax at all? Qualities. No wax at no all. Wax, wax. Now are these, um, so they're, they're absolutely gorgeous, but can you actually use them yes. in everyday life? Yes. My thing that I always tell people is that um, I am more clumsy than my children. So we've always used my pottery in our house. And so they're 11 and 14 now, but even when they were two and three and four, you know, I would be the one that would be inevitably dropping a cup on the ground. So everything is really durable, dishwasher safe, you know, ovens, microwaves. Oh, well, that's terrific. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna to turn to Bob for a mm -hmm. minute. Um, and you also brought some beautiful uh, pieces. Um, I've always been fascinated by kind of merging two different entities together. And I was thinking about, and I've thought for a long time about draping molten glass over different things. Uh, and I used to use some wire or metal and, uh, and get some really interesting shapes. And uh, about two months ago, I was wondering what would happen if I did a uh, a stone. So I walked out to the front yard and I <laughs> got what is called a field stone. So what I did is I uh, got a large, I brought it into the shop and got a large gather of uh, molten glass and uh, basically kept it on the blowpipe and draped it over the rock and then started to blow and I was blowing the bubble as it was folding over the rock and you know kind of controlling the shape that way. And uh, what happened is I was expecting the rock to explode because the oh. glass is at 2,000 degrees when I'm doing it and the rock is cold. So, but uh, 
I've done a whole series of these, and I haven't had any problems with the rocks at all. And, um, and these what, are just rocks outside in your driveway or they're, they're, in the lawn or wherever. <laughs> but we live in a very magical place, so uh, they're magic rocks. Uh, uh -huh. But anyway, so after the piece sets up to a certain extent and gets fairly solid, we want it to be able to not move around too much, so it goes into a cooling oven and has to cool down from about 1,000 degrees down to room temperature. That takes about 8 to 10 hours. And then a really fun part after this piece is blown is to actually uh, cut the top off and polish it so that you're getting different reflective um, tendencies in the glass so you can mm -hmm. see different yeah. levels oh, and yes, uh, I do. layers. So that's, that's uh, the final part. So I'm, I'm working with that whole cut and polished part too. Right. So, so, but this is something that you would put on a shelf and not necessarily use. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the last one I sold, uh, a woman bought it for uh, a window and she had uh, a meditation garden outside. Mm -hmm. And so she wanted to put this piece in the window so that when she looked at the garden outside, she would see this too. And I saw a photo. She sent me a photo oh, when she took it home. And it was absolutely amazing how comfortable those two pieces, I mean, the, the garden right. and that piece right. fit together. Right. So, and you know, the other thing, this shows the ability of the glass to be really molten and soft. Mm -hmm. And my favorite word when I use gla talk about glass is sensuous. It's a very sensuous piece. And then this part with the, um, the cut and the bevel and the polish shows how hard and rigid it is. And um, you know, it's nice to touch. It just yeah. feels good. And that's, that's one thing that really has drawn me to glass is uh, the ability of it to take so many different forms. That's and, wonderful. Uh, that's wonderful. Well, we should talk a little bit about, um, I mean, there are plenty of 24 different artists on, on the tour this year. And I will just actually talk a little bit about uh, what is on the tour. Um, we have Rachel Shaw, who does these beautiful, beautiful mittens, actually. And of course, we have jewelry with Jeannie Bennett, and Judy Hawkins does beautiful, um, beautiful paintings. Nancy, as well, do, uh, does Nancy Caligio uh, beautiful landscape paintings? And we actually have some very unusual um, crafts in terms of uh, handmade cheeses, handmade bicycles, uh, different kinds of farm art, um, which. This reminds me a little bit because it's two separate items put together. Uh, we also have um, handmade wines, different kinds of wines, um, and outdoor um, items as well, pottery items, hand wovens, uh, Green Mountain Spinnery, of course, um, Deborah, Debbie Lazar, um, I mentioned Putney Mountain Winery, Jesse Fox does the handmade, handmade bicycles, beautiful, absolutely incredible bikes. Um, Edelburn does um, also glass, but um, art glass, um, stained glass panels, and she's located right in Putney, like most everybody is, between Putney and Saxton's River. Um, then we have the Crooked Fence Farm, beautiful um, woolens and that sort of thing. Um, Robert, who is here. And your son. Now he also is doing some very interesting uh, ceramics and very sort of um, utilitarian mm -hmm. uh, functional, items. Functional stoneware. Functional stoneware. And your daughter also is involved in the tour, doing beautiful jewelry. And does she also? She blows glass as well. She blows glass at our shop, or yeah. my shop, and then she has her own studio for doing yeah. jewelry out of out of glass. Yeah, and she's also now three children. Mm -hmm. Three little babies. Yep. We're happy. We're happy. <laughs> Keep them coming. That's terrific. Um, Colleen does beautiful things um, with all kinds of encaustic art. And then we have Kim Grail who does um, really neat things with gourds, which I think actually we could see right here. Um, so that's kind of interesting. She's a new new on the tour. We have what four? I think four new artisans on the tour this year. So there's lots for people to see. And and I think I'm just going to read something that I thought we should talk about for a little bit. And that is, 
Um, this is information I actually was pulling off, offline and getting, you know, where are we or how are people really interested uh, these days uh, in handcrafted items and guess what? They are. <laughs> so I'm just going to read this and we'll talk about it. From jewelry to ceramics to handwovens to woodworking, handmade items are gaining in popularity according to the Wall Street Journal. And actually, um, this is going big time because as the journal says, the number one tactic for big retailers like Macy's, West Elm, Whole Foods, and Nordstrom to help them stand apart from their competition is to carry local artisan goods and rare global products. So here we are in the Putney Craft Tour, and you know people don't have to go to Nordstrom's or Macy's, they can actually come right here to Vermont and come right to the tour. But the demand for handmade products is growing. I mean, I think we were talking, Bob, you're talking about how things are not that unique. People are looking for the unique. Um, and something that's special, something that has limited availability. Um, so, and, and we know from the, in the tourism industry, people are looking for authentic experiences because there's just so much across this country that's um, not that authentic. Um, so the hand, and also we've got, uh, and I'm sure you can t talk about this, that in terms of the handmade trend, I mean, certainly now we have the internet, we have Etsy. I think Etsy, um, according to this, um, they sold 1.35 billion worth of creative goods or were, were sold over Etsy uh, a couple years ago. So over one million people around the world purchased these handmade items. So let's talk a little bit about what you think about that. How is that, um, how is that affecting your work and, and your business? How is that trend? What sure. do you think? Um, I think it, um, what's happened is it's probably moved uh, people toward looking for, for pieces that they can actually see, hold in their hand, and um, see that they have their own personality and they're not alike. Like all my pieces are, are formed by, uh, it's called offhand glass blowing meaning that I shape them all with gravity and centrifugal force. And uh, uh, so they're, they're free form shapes. And same thing with uh, Fiona's work. Uh, all those pieces are one of a kind. You know, they're, they're kind of, you know, I think both of them are limited production on one hand, but they all are completely unique to themselves. I think people are really looking for that. Uh, if you go online, what happens is if you really think about it, you'll look at a catalog or something and see a picture. Truth of the matter is, there's going to be, you know, a thousand of those produced, and they're going to be really close to that photo. So they're because uh, you want to stay true to that. And if you come on the tour, you're actually looking at the pieces. You actually can see them being uh, produced right in front of your eyes. And last uh, week, I had someone come into the shop, and they requested a. Um, a candy bowl from their childhood and I said you want me to make it and uh, so we made it right there and uh, you know it didn't come out quite the right color so I'm gonna make another one uh, for them but uh, so you can actually make requests you can talk to people about sp specific commissioned pieces um, I had someone come up and want to see me make a pumpkin so I had them actually help me make a pumpkin I had them turn the piece of while I put on the stem and um, you know so you're actually seeing something you know being created right right in front of you and you can actually see the process talk to the artist and if you're buying gifts gifts it makes it a whole lot more special because it has history it has uh, you know and we sign you know individual things on pieces of people you request do. it so you do. Uh, yeah. and all all sorts of things to make it uh, special and I think that's what pe one thing that people are really looking for for now is uh, something that really stands apart. Yeah, it's a great way to give something too, as you say. Mm -hmm. uh, and in your studio? Well, I was thinking what I hear in your story is that it's really about connection. It allows opportunity for people to not necessarily just connect to a product, but they're connecting to the process. And I think that's really important now because 
what I see is a lot of people feeling very disconnected in their lives. And um, so I almost think people are starving for connection mm -hmm. in any way that they can get it. And this is a really beautiful way to authentically connect not just with the artist and the medium, but maybe it's the smell of your studio or maybe it's a tree that they see when they're walking up to your studio or something that happens on the drive to get there. There is this sort of... It's, a, it's a memory. Well, right. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful memory. And I think one of the things we talk about in terms of the tour, when you mentioned drive, mm -hmm. is actually driving the back roads and finding the studios and you know walking into and they're all very different right. and I know you all have not really gone around on the tour because you're doing your own thing but I've been on you know several of these tours over the years and it's always something a little different but each studio is has its own personality totally. and so you walk in and I mean it's just it's it's an experience it's a really neat experience right and it's like you saying well the rocks are magical like that there's yeah. this magic quality yes. Yes. and I think to each person's studio there is that quality and it's a little bit different and it will speak differently to different people um, so I definitely think that's one thing. And then I think the other thing that's really important that this article speaks to is just sort of people being exhausted with mass production. Um, and again, wanting to have a sense in their life of authenticity, sort of the way we speak, the way we walk, the way we engage, and the way that we connect with our everyday things. Um, the story of you describing the woman who bought a piece like this and put it in her window, which sets the tone as she's gazing out to a meditation garden. I think there's more mindfulness um, in the way people are in relationship with their home spaces mm -hmm. that really speaks to the call for having handmade pieces that they're surrounded by. I think even, um, I've been reading, I think even the millennials, which we talk about, are actually very interested in handmade items. I mean, they also like very modern things, but mm. they like to mix it up right. um, with the handmade and the authentic. Mm -hmm. um, so. you, you use the word authentic, and I think also what happens is you're seeing as much the process and the pieces and the people, but you're seeing where they live, you're seeing where they actually are, and you're, you're actually seeing their, to a certain extent, their life, and you know, I spend all that time in the shop, and I, people realize that that's where I live most of my life, is in that's right. that shop, and you can actually get a sense. And I think that's one thing that drew most of the people on the tour to do what they do, is they were looking for that, uh, the lifestyle and the realness that that gives you. No. Well, that's another thing because young people today, uh, it's hard to find jobs, actually. And uh, I also, you know, again, reading uh, online that a number of them are going into um, becoming handcrafters and, and making, making things and actually turning it into a, a good business mm -hmm. because of the new, opportunities. Our new competition. Your new competition, <laughs> yes, they're coming up. I mean, you have a son and a daughter yeah, here they in, come. in the business. <laughs> Um, and here they come, which is um, probably a good thing for everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we're going back. So well, let's remind everybody about our dates. It's Thanksgiving weekend, November 24th, 25th, and 26th, 10 to 5, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Also, another wonderful thing about the tour is that um, percentage of certain items will go toward the um, Putney Food Shelf, right. uh, and also we have our sponsors, um, some of them are restaurants that are offering Putney Craft Tour specials, um, and actually I should read off some of the sponsors. So our top sponsors, Putney Food Co-op, the Four Columns Inn, and the Putney General Store. And then we have a number of other patron sponsors, Hickory Ridge House, J.D. McClement's Pub, I know they're offering some specials. Uh, Katie's Great Food Restaurant, The Putney Diner, Basketville, Penelope Word Glass, and she's right in Brattleboro, Next Stage Arts Project, Sandglass Theater, Vermont Jazz Center, Yellow Bar Music and, and School Festival, 
Um, also the Gleanery, and actually there'll be an exhibit uh, at the Gleanery where you can pick up, you can get an idea of the different um, studios and, and what they're offering on the tour, as well as you can pick up maps and maybe get some coffee or you know, talk to people about it. Um, and Green Mountain Orchard, uh, River Valley Credit Union, the Grammar School, and the Putney School, all helping to make, to make this uh, wonderful event uh, take place every year. This is the 39th annual Putney Craft Tour. Again, Thanksgiving weekend. Um, and I'm just gonna add a little something. For those of you who have been to the Welcome Center or wanna pick up this uh, magazine, Silvermont Arts and Living Magazine, there's a wonderful article in the magazine, actually, uh, um, about the artists on the tour and what sort of out of the studio and, and the work that they're producing and how they're, how we talked about it's, it's utilitarian in many ways and how you can use it in your everyday life and how nice that is. So this is in the um, fall issue of the Putney Craft Tour and thank you to Annie Landenberger for, for doing that article. Um, and what else do we want to say? Do you have any last words? Either of you? I'd like to say if you want something unique and you want to be able to, in some studios, see it being made, I, it's a wonderful opportunity. A lot of the studios uh, probably would be willing to do or consider doing a commission work if you have an idea of something that you want. A lot of the studios have refreshments. You know, we're going to have hot apple cider and uh, different cookies and whatnot. So uh, it's an enjoyable time. I wish I could go on the tour sometime. <laughs> I know. We have to figure out some time that you can all go on, th on the tour. Um, and all, I should also mention that Next Stage and Sandglass Theater um, are also having performances at night. So that if somebody coming on the tour, it's, it could be a whole weekend event. I mean, you can do the tour in the daytime. You can enjoy the specials. <laughs> and then you can have theater at night. That reminds me, I think, one of the most special things about this opportunity and maybe just the opportunity to be an artist working in this area is that everything is sort of hyper-localized. In a fairly rural environment in Putney, you have two theaters, you have a general store, you have a small co-op market, and you have farmers who are selling meat products, plant products, mm -hmm. um, you the cheese makers, wine makers, weavers. It's really incredible. So to have the opportunity to spend a day or two or a weekend and maybe just challenge yourself to see how local you can get from your meals to the things that you buy and how you use them. Um, I just think that's one of the most incredible gifts and rarities in today's society. And I, yes, and I think also, if you think about it, actually Friday is Black Friday. Right. Don't do Black Friday. Come to Putney because, <laughs> right? I mean, Black Friday is the total opposite of what we're, of what we're talking about. So till next time. Mm -hmm.